Welcome back. Look, I'm in a completely different part of the studio. I have never been here before. It's like they opened a door and I've walked through into a kind of studio Narnia. Um, so we'll see what happens. I will admit I had heard of Veganuary. Veganuary, how do you pronounce that? What do you say? Vegan? I think it's Veganuary. Like Veganuary. Veganuary, you know. It doesn't sound like a real word to me. <laughs> However... It's uh, not. It's not. <laughs> but this month is also apparently January. You see what we did there? Some five million Britons are now, according to research, regular drinkers of gin. Increasingly, it seems beer and wine are being challenged for dominance, not in my house, uh, by a rise in interest in cocktails like martinis, uh, Negronis, is that right? Negroni? Yeah, yeah. Negroni. You see, I'm, 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 I, I, I don't know where I am with this stuff. And a Long Island iced tea. I have vague memories of Long Island iced tea in another life. The common denominator in all of those and more is gin. Joining us now to refresh our palates with the spirit of the moment is Rory O'Sullivan, UK brand manager for Martin Miller's Gin. Hello, Rory. Thanks nice to be here. How's it? Thank, Thank you for coming me. in. Uh, I, I have to tell you now that uh, Polly and Tom tell me they are on dry January. I've heard. Do you think maybe we'll be able to twist it around and maybe uh, do like a dry uh, January? Uh, I, I, I think maybe some sniffing. Uh, can, you, can you sniff? Can <laughs> yeah, you sniff spirits? Sniff yeah, maybe a little sniff. During dry. Yeah. dry yeah. You could act, you could accident you could fall yeah. into the glass. In the interest of television research, I can. Uh, you I can, mean, it's like a, a big moral. Philo- it's like the, I don't know the big ideas. So one of those yeah. big moral philosophy questions: Who will crack, and how yeah. far will they crack? You could trip well, and fall easily. into the glass. Seventy percent of your taste is for your smell anyway. So yeah. you're going to get seventy percent of the drink. It's fine. It's all good. No, I, I used the word uh, January, which yes. I heard for the first time earlier today. Yeah. I'll be quite honest with you. Is it is it really a thing? Are yeah, people so talking about January? It's a starting trend. It's been around for a few years, um, but it's become more and more popular. And it's really just to do with the rise of craft gins. So loads and loads of people are seeing January as an opportunity um, not to really go out and get really drunk. That's not the idea. But the whole idea of January is that you're trying something different. So you might try a new gin every day, something that you might not really expect that you're going to like. And you're building that uh, sort of like respect for how the spirit's made. Because all gins are made in a different way, and that's the fascinating thing. I, I certainly grew up thinking that gin was gin. Yeah. What is, what is uh, talk me through this idea of, you know, craft gin. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but I am aware that gin has changed its reputation. Mm. There's, uh, there's a, a neighbouring friend of mine, actually, in Stirling, uh, has, uh, amongst other things, has a company producing kin- Kinrara gin, I know, because mm. we have a, you know, a beautiful bottle of it in the house. Where has that interest come from? So I think in, in Scotland, another sort of key thing you've got to look at is that a lot of people are making whiskey distilleries. And obviously, when you're aging a whiskey, you can't sell that whiskey for like seven years, minimum, right? So what do you do in the meantime? So you're seeing loads and loads of new Scottish gins come out. And that's sort of like tying in with the whiskey industry as well. Obviously, there's people making gin just sort of standalone. But a lot of that, the rise in sort of Scottish gin has come from that. Um, it's also with grants from the government. So the Scottish government have been really supportive of setting up new, new, new distilleries to see, it, see it as a craft. Um, but in terms of like craft gin, so Martin Miller's essentially led the way. Um, since 1999, it was the world's first ever super premium gin. So before that point, the idea of having a gin that cost over £20 like, didn't exist at all. No one really cared. It was genuinely seen as like a poor spirit. Um, mm. So Martin Miller really wanted to sort of flip it on its head and sort of like revolutionise the gin industry and make the world's first super premium. So let's... let's-